All right, folks, let's continue our journey through kind of a mock draft, more or less. Um, definitely won't have time to do all the teams, but maybe we'll get through the top 10. And today, we're taking a look at the Indiana Pacers with the sixth overall pick in this year's NBA draft. Again, all dependent on what happens before them, and obviously the further out you go in the draft, the more possibilities there are. This team in Indiana, a little bit unclear exactly what direction we're going in. You know, Miles Turner's been on the trading block, it seems, his entire career. It seems like they're going to keep him for this season, maybe until the deadline. He's in the last year of his contract, so that's a whole situation. You also have a collection of older players, Malcolm Brogdon, Buddy Heald, TJ McConnell, who you would imagine will be on the move sooner rather than later. It's just a matter of time. But, you know, when they made the Halliburton Sabonis trade, they made it seem as though and kind of publicly stated that they're not in a rebuild, it's just a retooling. So they still kind of have a desire to win relatively soon. Whether that is the correct approach, who's to say, but this Indiana front office has made, you know, some solid decisions throughout kind of, you know, the past decade when you look at, you know, drafting Paul George and that kind of Danny Granger, Roy Hibbert era, and then flipping George for future all-stars in Victor Oladipo and Sabonis, and now, you know, trading Sabonis for a very unique player in Tyrese Halliburton. You know, you don't have a lot of guards like him that distribute, that facilitate, you know, that aren't looking to score first and then are just getting assists kind of out of just a high usage rate and making passes and having the ball in their hands all the time. So he is someone that, you know, you can kind of pair with anyone when you're looking at these prospects that might fall to six. And if you look more broadly, if you're looking to trade, you know, Tyrese Halliburton is not going to be the problem for a, in terms of fit, um, no matter what direction they go here. Now, you know, other than that, you know, you look at Isaiah Jackson probably taking a big step up. O'Shea Brissett potentially, you know, Goga maybe. It's not the most exciting young core in the league. I think this sixth pick will also, you know, have something to say with that. And obviously, you know, Chris Duarte going into his sophomore year. Now, he's older, so even though it's a little deceiving to think of him as kind of a young prospect, but expect him to do, uh, you know, be a major contributor on this roster going forward. Wouldn't, you know, be torn up if he is dealt, potentially if they're looking to trade up. Maybe they have fallen in love with Jane Ivey. It's kind of a similar situation as the Pistons at five, that, you know, if they want Jane Ivey, they're going to have to make an offer for the Kings. Um, and likely one that's going to be serious. Now, the problem is the Pacers and Kings already traded before the deadline, so it's not like Miles Turner is going to make the Kings happy, as we've already seen how Sabonis and Turner don't really, you know, work together as a front court. Whether the Kings would be interested in Brogdon seems unlikely. They already have a full backcourt. So unless, you know, maybe it's six and Duarte, it's been floated out there. Don't hate that. I think the Kings probably would ask for more. You might need another future asset, a future first, um, to really kind of push the issue for Sacramento and make it really an offer they can't refuse. But I do think the Pacers will find someone at six that makes sense. Um, you know, it's there's a decent chance that Keegan Murray falls to them here. I think that's a great fit, someone that has defensive versatility, that can score the ball, um, that kind of has that grit. You know, Indiana's always had that kind of element of grit, um, and I think he definitely fits that profile. You know, Coach Rick Carlisle fits kind of his system, what he wants to do, um, and gives them kind of a wing defender because, you know, the blast, it's hard to judge a ton from the last, you know, 20 games, but they were, you know, turnstile defense for the most part. And it was a bunch of young guys, so, you know, you can't expect too much out of them. But to bring some of that defensive mindset, I think Keegan Murray makes a ton of sense for them at six. Now, if they want to take on more of a project, Shaden Sharp could also fall 
depending on the top five shakes out. Um, you know, obviously more unknown about the guy. So does Rick Carlisle even want to take on a project? Because I think that has a lot to do with the team's mindset. You know, as a franchise, they have a guy in Rick Carlisle who's, you know, not like a young and up-and-coming coach that's trying to develop guys. You know, he's someone that's a proven winner, that's won a championship. And so, you know, he doesn't want to waste years away, you know, tanking when, you know, maybe they can win. Now, obviously, I don't know if that's the best place for the Pacers when you look at it kind of more broadly. Look at how competitive the East is going to be in the near future with Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, Brooklyn even, Philly. Um, it's going to be really tough to compete, you know, this Indiana team to even win a playoff series. Uh, even with the guys they got, even if they kept everyone and their starting five was, you know, Brogdon, Halliburton, Duarte, we'll say, you know, maybe Isaiah Jackson, a four miles Turner. Like, I don't know if that team is going to be maybe a play-in team. So if it was me, I would try and, you know, Brogdon, Buddy Heald, I would trade Miles Turner, to be totally honest with you, and that's tough because I'm wearing a Texas shirt right now. But he's, you know, a little, he's not really that old when you think about it. He's like 26, 27. But in terms of trying to develop people, I think this is a team that does need to rebuild instead of retool. You know, to really build a championship caliber team, you need some top 10 consecutive picks. And, you know, Hal Burn counts as one. This next player, whoever it turns out to be, will count as one. And I think you need a third. So if you're, you know, trying to compete for playoffs this year, you kind of are going to lose out. And if you just get like a mid first or even like the 12th pick, you know, you're going to be kind of stuck there. So if I'm Indiana, I'm looking at trying to flip, you know, Buddy Brogdon, turn to try and get some assets, maybe another first. Somewhere in there, they should get a first, I would think, either for Turner or Brogdon, maybe both. Um, if not, then, you know, a guy in his early 20s, I think Cam Reddish would be a really interesting target for Indiana, um, just in terms of needing help on the wing uh, with Duarte. Uh, that would make sense. And obviously, he doesn't seem to be fitting in with the Knicks, so try and figure out something there and who like the Knicks are in this weird spot too but I think you know if we could get reddish Pacers might have to take on one of those kind of wacky contracts whether it's Fournier whether it's Alec Burks you know but a veteran presence couldn't hurt Fournier's obviously deals a little longer so wouldn't love that but maybe if it's you know Burks reddish um and maybe Nerland's Noel someone just to fill up the caps you know the salary needed to get a Brogdon or Buddy Heald or Miles Turner. I don't think you could hate that. I think, you know, Cam Reddish in the right situation, you know, without, you know, kind of Atlanta was crowded. New York was crowded. I think there's space for him in Indiana to actually play and, you know, kind of build confidence and be, you know, kind of that defensive minded wing that the, that any playoff team could use, you know, you can never have too many of those. So that would be someone I would target whether Matisse Thibel is on the table would be an interesting kind of possibility as well. Because um, it looks like, you know, the team's interested in a Brogdon, a Buddy Heel, or Turner are going to be most likely competitors. Because um, they're, you know, they're obviously past kind of, they're not going to be joining a rebuilding team. So it's going to be teams looking to upgrade at positions. It's going to be, like, if the Knicks want to make a big upgrade, Charlotte Hornets, you know, Philadelphia, teams that are trying to get to the next level whether that's, you know, a play-in trying to become a playoff team, a playoff team trying to become, you know, a title contender. You know, they're going to try and upgrade with Brogdon, with Buddy Heald, with Miles Turner. Now, with Brogdon's injury history, hard to tell his value. Buddy Heald's never really played for a winning team, but you'd like to think he's probably can still huck up, you know, 10 threes a game for whoever and make him at a decent rate. And Miles Turner, too, you know, you worry a little bit about the rebounding numbers, you worry a little bit about injuries, but obviously the shot blocking is there. You can shoot a little bit from the outside. So you'd like to think you can also contribute to a winning team. And if you're in any hope, you can convince 
a trade partner that they can do that for you. So kind of broadly, you love the Halliburton piece and it's just like, who knows what else? Duarte maybe got hurt still like you think he, he's solid. Isaiah Jackson, not sure exactly what his ceiling is at this point. O'Shea Brissett gave, you know, some great minutes. Goga, not sure if he's a starting big man in the league or not. So a lot of uncertainty in Indiana at the moment. And, you know, I think this sixth pick can change kind of the tide, depending on if they nail it. If a guy like Keegan Murray can perform like he did in college at the next level, I think that would be huge for them. Um, or if, you know, a shade and sharp, you know, high ceiling guy, offensive ability is there. It's just a matter of, you know, again, will it translate or do they try and move up for Jane Ivy? Not sure the Pistons are going to be into that. So, or Kings for that matter. And so that leaves us here at six. You know, I don't think. Other names you could throw out, like a Dyson Daniels. Maybe him and Halburn kind of are, are redundant. Um, Benedict Matherin has been kind of jumping draft boards. He's another kind of wing defender guy. Could make sense here. Again, like Murray would bring some defense um, to the table and athleticism. So he's another name I'll float out there. Again, if they want to trade Turner. I don't see Jalen Duran going up, but... Let me know what you think. Who do you have the Pacers taking at six? Or do you have them trading up, trading back? How do you see this shaking out for the folks in Indiana and the Pacers? Let me know. And for now, take it easy. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.